We're so excited to have Don Dickerman with us today. He's written several books for many years. He uh, had a prison ministry and ministered in almost a thousand prisons. Over a hundred thousand people in prison accepted Christ as a result of his ministry. Today, he majors in deliverance and healing. Yes. And uh, he is from Hearst, Texas. So please join Joni and me as we welcome Don Dickerman to Celebration. Don, it is great to have you. I'm, and the prison ministry that you had for so many years, this wasn't just like going down to the local county jail for somebody that was with DUI. You encountered some very infamous inmates. Who are some of the ones uh, that people might recognize their name? Well, there, actually there have been many, but uh, probably the, the, the most famous or infamous would be uh, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, so-called, and Mark David Chapman, uh, Carla Faye Tucker. Of course, Mark David Chapman is the person who assassinated John Lennon, John Lennon of the yes. Beatles. Yeah, I in, was there in New York City when that happened. Really? Yeah. Well, he's, uh, he's still in New York. <laughs> he's going to be there a while. Uh, he's in... Uh, He's in the prison uh, that people probably heard about, Attica, uh, and he's in a special building uh, separated from the other inmates. But uh, I, I know Mark and David. Uh, as a matter of fact, David called the other night uh, and was surprised to, to learn I was going to be on here talking a little bit about uh, what God has done in his life. And, but uh, yeah. So tell us about that. So David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, mm -hmm. who killed all these people. I mean, he was a serial killer. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how he came to Christ and do you believe it to be oh, genuine? Well, yeah, I definitely believe it to be genuine. Uh, and it's, it's an interesting story. Uh, I wrote him a letter. Uh, so I've, I've been in prison ministry since I was a little boy, uh, 30, 32 years. Uh, <laughs> you started at eight, right? Yeah, I was at <laughs> seven or eight. <laughs> but uh, I, I wrote David a letter when he was arrested, and there was so much in the news about it, and I had been going into prisons a few years. So I wrote him a letter that basically <laughs> said, David, God still loves you, and Jesus can save you. And he wrote me right back, and he said, if I get out of here, I'll kill you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it, it stopped our correspondence. And, wow. Wow. Uh, I, uh, but for whatever reason, God kept him on my heart, and uh, I didn't know what he looked like, didn't, didn't know anything about him, uh, but I was in his prison preaching 10 years later at the Sullivan Prison in uh, uh, Fallsburg, New York, where he's still today, and uh, after the service that night, uh, an inmate walked up to me, put his arm around me, and kind of gave me a firm hug, you know, and he said... Um, I just want you to know I appreciate you being faithful, coming into these dark places over the years and bringing the light of the gospel. And he said, I appreciated the service tonight. And he stuck out his hand. He said, by the way, my name's David Berkowitz. And I could look in his eye and tell something that happened. I said, David, are you a Christian? He said, yes, sir. I've been saved a couple of years now uh, up in Dannemora, New York. And so the last name Berkowitz, Berkowitz. did he come from a Jewish family? Yes, uh, yes his, uh, actually his mother uh, had an affair out of wedlock and, um, with another Jewish man. And he was, he was given up at birth and adopted by a Jewish family. And David, um, David was doubtless <laughs> demon-possessed, uh, grew up demon-possessed, talks about it. Uh, understands it now and is free from it now. But he's a, a classic example of demonic possession. I want us to talk some more about that in a moment because that's something you don't hear very much about. I know my friend, Pastor Frank Harbor, is going to be preaching on that Sunday. He told me that yesterday at his church. Many yes, pastors yes. don't talk about that subject. But Carla Faye Tucker, I don't know about those other people because I didn't, Mm -hmm. interview them or talk to them or really see them. But if there's anybody that was yes. ever truly saved and delivered and set free, I know Joni and I feel like that she was. Because Absolutely. Yeah. You could just see the love of Jesus and the joy of the Lord and yes. the peace. She was an amazing person, wasn't she? Carla Faye, was, she was my friend. And I was, I was with her many times on death row there in, in Gatesville. 
But she said something that, that, I, that sticks with me. Many times she would tell me, she said, I wish I could just divide up in a million pieces and tell people what Jesus has done for me. Wow. And actually that happened uh, during the publicity she got. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there, there's no doubt she was born again. Uh, David's born again. There, there's, there are many who, who are born again. There's, there's some in our audience today that are ex-inmates. One man, uh, 18 and a half years in prison. Wow. You uh, know, one of the things, Don, I think that for our viewers, I know a lot of times you'll hear about these serial killers, et cetera, and they'll, they say they came to know the Lord in prison, et cetera. Yeah. And people are very skeptical sure. a lot of times. Sure. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is you can be forgiven Mm -hmm. for murder, mm -hmm. as horrible as that is. I know some people, I've, heard, I've seen the families that were broken and have such bitterness and unforgiveness, and, and, and you can understand why, sure. maybe the sure. loss of a child or a loved one, and they would say, you know, no matter what, they're gonna burn in hell, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that these people can be forgiven, and sure. you have seen the transforming power of God take place in their life. And like you said, when you looked at Carla Faye Tucker, Oh, and no you doubt. looked in yeah. her eyes, yeah. you could see that transformation. Yeah. And that, that little girl never had a chance growing up. Uh, just so many things in her family, in her life, and basically the same way with, with David. And that's not to excuse anything they did, uh, but does help us understand. Because Carla paid the price. I mean, oh, yeah. she, she went to death row and yeah. she was executed. executed. And uh, took full responsibility for yes. what she so, did. Don, let's talk about today. Your ministry is one of deliverance. And I'm holding a book in my hand, Serpents in the Sanctuary, Breaking Bondage in Believers. And there's a lot of controversy about this. Sure. You know, can a Christian be demon-possessed? And sometimes it's a matter of semantics. Yeah. You know, I don't believe that a Christian can have a demon in their soul. But I'm beyond having to be convinced that Christians at times are oppressed and depressed and attacked and manipulated mm. and influenced by demons. Absolutely. And so, you know, we can ignore it. Yes. But if we did, it'd be like just trying to put a Band-Aid over a cancer and hoping that it'll go away. It's a real problem even amongst Christians, yes. isn't it? Well, that's who I deal with, you know. We have uh, uh, people coming to our office for deliverance on a regular basis uh, from all over the country. Uh, most of them are pastors. The, the majority of who we see, uh, we had a couple yesterday from Phoenix, uh, a, a youth minister and his wife. The day before, a pastor and his wife right here in this area. And uh, so it's, uh, it's children's bread. That's what uh, Jesus called it. When the, the woman came and asked, for, said, my little girl is grievously vexed with the devil. <laughs> and um, Jesus said, well, this is children's bread. What you're asking for is children's bread. And you're not, you're not one of the children. She was a Gentile. But when she believed, when she fell at his feet and said, oh, you're, you're the son of God. Uh, so I'll, I'll just take the crumbs, you know, that, that fall from the master's table. He said, basically, he said, you're in now. You qualify now. And he said, oh, woman, great <laughs> is your faith. Yes. And be it unto you according as, as you will. And the little girl was healed and delivered. But the little girl uh, had to be uh, uh, innocent. She was a child of God. This lady did not qualify until she expressed faith in Jesus. Now, what would be some of the signs of a demonic activity in a Christian's life? Well, you know, um, I, I have on our website, I have uh, a list of 60 symptoms uh, of demonic uh, activity. And this is, this is what I believe, Marcus, is um, demons cannot get into the spirit because that's where the Holy Spirit lives. Yes. But the flesh and the soul would be similar to the outer court of the tabernacle and to the holy place where act activity was not limited, but, but no one could go into the holy of holy. Sin couldn't enter there. So in, in a literal sense, uh, Christians are not possessed. We're possessed by God. We're owned, purchased, bought with a price. We belong to Him. Uh, but we can be oppressed and uh, Demonized may be the correct word. Uh, they can occupy areas of our life. And I see, I see healings come as a result of demons going. 
Uh, you know, so uh, I was going to mention uh, my dear friend, Dr. James Morocco there in um, Maui who did his whole dissertation on this subject and to me he explained it better than anyone that I've ever heard. He talked about the, the whole uh, possessed, obsessed, yeah. you know, it, or maybe is not even the best terminology to use, but he said, do you remember years ago when um, people would own land and squatters would come and exactly. live on the land. Exactly. They didn't have the right to be there. No legal rights. They shouldn't have been there. And unless you went and dealt with them and made them leave, made them they leave. would yeah. stay and take up residence. Yeah. And he said, that's the way that demon that's spirits it. are. If you open a door mm -hmm. through pornography or through um, some, some sin, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness is classic. you open a door, then mm -hmm. the enemy will take that opportunity to come in and squat on your territory and deceive you and oppress you, et cetera, et cetera. Is and that what you see? And will stay until he's kicked out. Yeah. Um, and interesting, that's what Jesus said. Uh, he didn't say medicate them or uh, counsel them out. He said cast them out. Mm -hmm. And he gave us authority to do that. Every believer has the authority to do that. And what, what I see, uh, Joni, is um, generally most people, uh, most believers, uh, know there's oppression and know they're dealing with uh, uh, with evil, but um, I don't think Satan's ever been to my house. You know, he's one created mm -hmm. being, but he has a host of soldiers. Uh, the Bible says that God created an innumerable company, myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands of angels, and a third of those fell. Mm -hmm. And we're their targets, believers. Uh, the, uh, a lost person, they're on the same team, you know, they're allies. And so yes. we're the, they're trying to get our testimony. All right, so tell us about when you have a um, deliverance session with somebody, they come to you, mm -hmm. what is that typically like? You know, uh, it's people, people want to think about head spinning, you know, and people being the thrown exorcist. around. The think uh, about that yeah, movie. <laughs> never seen that happen, never seen anything like that happen. It's very much an, an encounter just like we're doing right now. I call it a truth encounter, not a power encounter. Uh, when you think about a power encounter, you, you think Jehovah God versus a little demon. How is that a power encounter? It's truth, it's legal rights. Mm -hmm. And so in a, in a typical setting, we, we uh, approach it by uh, taking the demons to court. Jehovah God, he's the righteous judge. And so when the person is before us, obviously we take them through uh, prayers of repentance and generational curse breaking and uh, those type things. That's confession before the righteous judge. Once they confess, the legal rights are canceled. I believe holy angels serve as bailiffs in this court. They enforce the rules. And so then we encounter the demons. What, what God has shown me to do uh, is to address them by name rather than function. I command them to reveal, and they do. They don't take over the person's voice, uh, but they have access to the mind, and uh, the person will tell me what, what they're hearing. But I'll, I'll get the, I, I command the demon to give me his creative name, the name Jehovah God gave him when he was created as a holy angel. And they don't like to do that, but you'll get the name. The next thing I want to- Could you give an example of one of the names you've heard? Heard one yesterday, uh, Jehoshabad. Wow, and, um, that's remarkable. Isn't oh, it is. You know, we've got. Uh, I started cataloging a, a couple of years ago. We could would encounter so many different demon names, and I just had stacks of notes, you know. And it was like one day I, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, "I'm giving you all this information, and you just got it stacked up over here." So I started going through it and, and inputting into the computer, well, here's a demon that starts with A and his function was, and I've got about 25,000 names of demonic powers. My goodness. And their functions, and what I find is they're almost like unionized. They always, well, we only do fear, we only do doubt, we do sickness, we do. And so I, I command this demon, who are you? What's your, what's your, just like Jesus said, who, who are you? And the demon responded, legion, because we're many. So Jehoshaphat, I'm, I'm addressing this demon spirit. I'm commanding him, what's your function as a demon power? What's your assignment in this person's life? I know you rob, steal, kill, destroy. That's why you're in court. But what's your assignment in his life? And uh, he 
gave me the assignment and I said, how, you know, how many, and of course all demons are liars. But what I have found is that they won't lie to Jehovah God. We always keep them under oath. And so I asked them, uh, how many are there? How many prince, how many kingdoms are there? Never just one demon. It's a kingdom of destruction. And so um, it may be yesterday, I think it was seven in this youth minister's wow. life. And then in each kingdom, all been on destruction. There was a lust kingdom. Um, a lot of it from generational curse. Uh, some demons will confess to you they've been in the family 15, 20, 30 generations. It's never, never been broken. Mm. And what I find, uh, Marcus, in, in church, and my pastor is Dr. Frank Harbor, you know. Uh, and you are you, a Southern Baptist minister. I'm a minister. Southern Baptist, licensed, ordained, seminary graduate, all of And when this started happening in my life, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for it. Because people don't like to talk about or deal with this or even think about no, it. No, no. They, they, they can think about heaven and God yeah, and just angels. They it doesn't exist. They don't want to deal that there is a real enemy out there. Yeah. Well, you know, we are running out of time today, but I want to encourage you about getting this book, Serpents in the Sanctuary. Let's put up that in information and the website. You can go there and you can order the book uh, on that website and look up all this information that Don has. You can find out about his schedule and if you need deliverance and you need to make an appointment, men and women come from all over America and around the world. They come to this man of God and he is seeing results. And so I say, Don, thank you for this thank because you, there's not too many people understand this. There's not too many people that want to deal with it, but it's a prevalent problem. And thank God yes. that you've written books about it, that you have a ministry about it, you have an outreach and even a direct one-on-one -on -one ministry to yes. people. Yes. So continue to call today. If you need deliverance, if you need prayer, if you feel like that there's demonic activity in your life or somebody in your immediate family, contact Don Dickerman's ministry. 